What's up, everyone? Bashar Ketu here. If you don't know me by now, I'm the founder and CEO of BJK University, an education platform with a mission impact a million lives at a time. So we've been thinking of a bunch of ways on how to provide value to you. And finally, we came back to starting a podcast. And the reason being is every time I, you know, I, I am in a conversation where I am really engaged and, and like there's a whole bunch of things just flowing out of me. It's in an organic conversation, an organic setting where I'm just talking to a friend and, you know, there's a ton of things that are being generated. So that's why I wanted to start this podcast for you, because at the end of the day, really, this is the reason why we're all here. With that said, I decided to start the podcast with someone else, someone who I really enjoy talking to, someone who shares a similar mindset and who I've known for a long time. Now, before I introduce him, I need a small favor from you. If you haven't subscribed already, do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And also in the comments, let us know what you want this podcast to be named. Because believe it or not, we don't even have a name for this podcast. And we want you to be involved in this process just because, you know, we were thinking of all these crazy creative names. But at the end of the day, we're doing this for you and we want you to be involved as well. So drop in the comments below what names you would like to have this podcast to be named. And we're going to do this at the end of March. Now, the person that we choose is actually going to win $1,000 in cash. Drop in the comments as well, whatever topics you'd like us to talk about and things that you want us to share our insights. And also, if there is someone that you want us to interview, be sure to drop their name in the comments below. I would love to introduce to you my co-host and really the co-founder of BJK University, Aaron Shiviterese. Hopefully, I did not butcher his last name, but I've known Aaron for the last three years. He was literally the very first person that joined BJK University when I started expanding back in 2019, and he's been an incredible part of its expansion. So with that said, I would like to pass the mic over to Aaron so you can introduce yourself and kind of get to know a little bit more about who he is and how we met. Yeah, man. Good times, Bashar. <laughs> Here we are, my friend. So back in the day when we first bumped into each other, um, I was living in Southeast Asia, right? Remember? I was on the island. And we were both like doing a ton of affiliate marketing and, and things online. You were selling uh, your course. And I was just getting into the internet because we went through some some interesting times living in the island um, back then. And we bumped into each other on Facebook, right? And you hit me up and you're like, hey, man, let's, let's do an interview on Facebook, or whatever. And you interviewed me. Like, that's the first time we met, right? And uh, I kind of remember how it went. Do you, do you remember how it went? It's a little foggy. Well, I remember the first time I talked to you in person, or I guess over Zoom, it was um, I had this podcast thing where I would bring entrepreneurs and so on. And, uh, and I was interviewing you and you came on, I still remember, you came on shirtless with like a pina colada in your, in your hand and you were, I mean, you were drunk off your ass. I don't, I don't even know if you even knew what was going on, mm -hmm. but I was literally telling myself, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? What, what's happening right now? <laughs> that sounds about right, man. That does sound about right. So back then, um, my wife and I had been living in, in Southeast Asia for, I guess, close to eight years. You know, um, we first were in Singapore in corporate hospitality, and then we moved to an island and we did more of a consulting from the hospitality side of things. And it sort of led into like festivals and beach resorts. And you know how it is at these party islands, right? Um, just doing my job, man. I was just, I was on duty, you know, I was at the party. What am I, what am I supposed to do? I got to host that thing. But like, um, I just sort of came to a, a moment in time where I needed to make a decision whether it was like continue with this, the brick and mortar on the island and things, or like try something new on the internet. And you kind of met me in that moment where I was still kind of feeling out both. I had lots of opportunities to keep building brick and mortar on different islands and things where a lot of my friends went and expanded and did really well. And I also was like, but this internet thing is very interesting. I see a lot of other um, opportunities over here, like with leverage and things that I didn't, I didn't have in the brick and mortar, right? So I was sort of feeling out both worlds and in the Facebook world, you're like interviewing people to, to get out there, right? So there we are. And you probably helped me a ton because I had no audience back then at all. And so we chatted and um, yeah, that was pretty much the beginning of it. And then we, we fast forwarded uh, about a year, right? And I had moved over to Europe and started into sales and stuff. And then I had you on my podcast, right? right. The growth podcast, the podcast that I started so that I could network with people. My goal was like, I want to meet people on the internet because I don't know anybody yet. 
And you were like one of the top five, first five people I hit up because I only knew about six. You know, and I was like, hey, that dude with the mustache, man, he hit me on on the island. I'm going to hit him up. We got you on there. We talked FBA and talked Amazon. And here we are, man. We were just buddies ever since, right? Pretty uh, pretty crazy ride, you know? Totally. Uh, last few years has been nuts. Well, that's nuts. awesome. Well, well, as um, I mean, what um, those that are watching, what should they expect from what we're what we're doing here? And maybe uh, spend a couple of minutes talking about why we started this and kind of what uh, what the uh, the future of this podcast is going to look like. Totally, man. So, um, like like you know, or like you out there on the internet, right? You're looking at at Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You're seeing socials and stuff, and there seems to have been this like era of curated bullshit where people are just like you know it looks perfect. Instagram, everything's just perfect and shiny. And you're getting this, this false sense of reality. And it's been going on for quite a while now. And then that sort of leaked over into the podcast world. And my podcast was actually part of that because I was very scripted in a sense. I had a lot of questions dialed in and I had a sort of a, a sequence of events to go through. But I think like you and I, we both enjoy content that's raw and real and people are just having high level conversations about interesting shit, you know, like, I love listening to guys like Joe Rogan and, and people like that, Russell Brand and these guys, because they just talk about interesting shit as if there's no cameras around and it ends up going into rabbit holes and you learn things about the way people think. You learn things about how people got from where they are to where they are now or where they were to where they are now and the steps it took to get there. And I find with like a real conversation, you're actually getting sort of like the authentic truth behind what it actually fucking takes to get shit done. Not the shiny like, hey bro, get the motivation and make it happen. Like you actually get the nuggets of what it took for that guy to go from where they are before, whatever that was, to where they are now and where they're going in their plans to get there. And ultimately you just kind of realize that we're all the same. You know, we're all on the journey the same way. And for me, this podcast is just an opportunity to chat with you because you and I have awesome conversations. We get along really well. We're building an awesome company. And it's just like, man, fucking let's record it and just let the people listen to it, give us feedback, ask questions. We can go two ways with it, get interactive and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. You know, I, you know, what's, uh, what's interesting is that literally every time me and you talk halfway through the conversation, we're like, fuck, we should have hit record, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, there's always these like nuggets that we talk about. Uh, sometimes even, uh, if I'm like, you know, training in the morning with my trainer or if I'm out with friends or whatever, it's always like these, these organic conversations that happen when you least expect them. And I'm always like, man, I wish I was mic'd right now. And mm -hmm. I think this is exactly what we're trying to accomplish here is, uh, as you said, these raw, authentic conversations. And so, um, I know this podcast, you know, started with a, with a, with a, uh, with a, or this, I guess this video started with an intro do not expect that moving forward, right? Like those of you that are watching, do not expect that. You know, we're just literally the video is going to start with me and Aaron just talking about, you know, four or five different things that we um, we felt like we want to talk about, things that we thought of uh, during the week. And so you have a chance to influence those topics. You have a chance to influence the things that you want to hear, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to deliver value to you. These are all things that we've learned throughout our lives and we want to bring them out and share them with you. Because that's one thing that I've realized with uh, like with Tony Robbins is he talks about how in order for people to be fulfilled, they need to be growing and then they need to be contributing. Like, the, you know, every time I hear something, every time I know something, the first thing I want to do is I want to share it with someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I feel good. You know, it, when you share it with other people. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Uh, so, again, this video just wanted to introduce Aaron and uh, let you guys know about our plan. So three things before we end this. Number one, subscribe. Number two, drop in the chat what you want the name of this podcast to look like. And by the end of March, we're going to pick a winner and the winner will win a thousand dollars cash. And the third thing is drop in the chat as well, what topics you'd like us to talk about and what are some things that you want to see on this podcast. Outside of that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Let's not just glaze over the fact that it's your birthday. You know, okay. <laughs> the, the team's in there blowing you up. I see all these people dropping, you know, love bombs inside our community in school with the students. I see it inside Slack with the team of like 60 or 70 people. 
I see 5,000 people in school dropping bombs. And Bashar's over here, like, just pretending it's another fucking day. He puts, like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know, it's like, no biggie. Dude, happy birthday, man. Happy fucking thanks, birthday. Buddy. It's I awesome. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah you. absolutely, man. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to be able to say it to you, you know? Um, I know I had my birthday a couple of weeks ago, and when the team was, like, talking about you know, thanking you for the variety of things and today about, you know, thanking them for the opportunity and things and the students and all the results everyone's getting and how people's lives are changing and stuff makes you fucking feel good, right? Like in, in a, in a contribution way, you just mentioned a minute ago about Tony growth and contribution. It's like a birthday is a perfect opportunity to look, am I growing and am I contributing? And if you can say yes to those two things, it's a happy fucking birthday, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I remember in, in, uh, when I was turning, so I just turned 33 uh nice. when that's I, a good number you know what's funny is uh my uh my family like you know we're in a group text and uh my brother is like this is the this is the age jesus died i'm like why asshole <laughs> <laughs> thanks so, bud so, so um when i turned 25 i was i was devastated because to me, 30 was like, I'm going to die. It's like, I'm like 90, you know? <laughs> and uh, I was like halfway in that decade between 20 and, and 30, you know? And I, I had turned 25. But then when I look back at it, like when I had turned 30, when I had turned 31, 32, I was like, shit, I can't wait to be 40. I can't wait to be 50. I can't wait to be 60. Because if I've accomplished this much by this age, what else can I do by that age? Hmm. And when I reflect back at, at 25, like literally when I turned 25 was the worst year of my life. That's when I lost my restaurant. That's when I lost everything, got a DUI, all that stuff. And that was because I didn't have anything going on for me. You know, that's because I didn't have a, a, a plan. I didn't have, um, not that I didn't have a plan, but I didn't have like um, what Tony calls a compelling future. And I think this is where a lot of people get like, get in that rabbit hole of 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 um victim mentality and stuff is that they they don't have a compelling compelling future that they are excited about and this is why when a lot of people ask what should i work on the very first thing i always say figure out your why be very clear on your why because if you have a like a roadmap and a north star regardless what's happening in life which a bunch of ups and downs are going to happen it's going to be the draw. It's going to be the thing that's going to be, that's going to keep pulling you, you know? Have your birthdays um, changed? I know you were back yeah. in the day. You had, sorry, you had the restaurants and I've seen pictures and shit. Like I'm a little bit different today. I would assume sitting here with me talking like that's fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean like for example, today it started with, um, well, I, so I've been away, uh, for Tony Robbins. Uh, we went on this, uh, on this week long, uh, you know, and as you were talking about skiing, I'm like, oh, I just learned how to ski, you know, so that's kind of cool. Um, we went on this week long, uh, I guess you can call it retreat to literally listen to 22 of the world's like leaders and it come when it comes to finance and investing and that kind of stuff. Uh, Steve Forbes, the founder of, of Forbes magazine, was there, Ray Dalio, you know, managing oh. over 250 billion dollars, you know. One of the, arguably one of the, the 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 best. There we go. One of the best, uh, 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 the most successful fund managers, um, uh, Paul Tudor Jones. I mean, you know, some of like I think seven or eight of them were multi billionaires. To simply learn from them how to invest, how to generate wealth, and, and stuff like that. And so, when you go to a retreat like this with Tony Robbins, it's like 12, 14 hour days. You know, your sleep is shit. Your your food is shit. I mean, everything is shit. You know, you're just going. He 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 believes in total immersion, right? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, this is where you know we can even go into this rabbit hole of like total total immersion versus like dabbling. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. this is why 80, 90 percent of of the humankind will never accomplish anything significant because they're dabbling because they want to test the waters, right? Like water testers just don't work. No. You're either gonna go all in or you're not. For me, it's the it's the love that that people are now like sharing like as you said slack was blowing up you know a few students reached out on school uh saying happy birthday and then just being grateful for where i am mm. you know uh looking back seven eight years ago i had just lost a business one with it hundreds of thousands of dollars 
And I didn't know what's going to happen next week or next month or next year or whatever. I had no, not that I didn't have a plan. Well, I didn't have a plan. Like right now, I know exactly where I'm going to be in five years. I know exactly where I want to take BJK University. You know, I'm very intentional about the people that I want around my life. Like, as you said earlier about partying and kind of doing things for other people, I'm very intentional about who I bring into my life, who I keep away from my life. I love my family to death, but the reason why I, I, I moved cross country was because I love them. I don't necessarily want to share every single day with them or week, you know, because they just have a completely different mindset. And although I tried to fix them, it just wasn't my place to do that because I am on this trajectory doesn't mean it's the right thing for them or not. Yeah. When you were in Asia, you were in more in the of the brick and mortar type of type of businesses, right? And now you're online. So has that impacted how you celebrate your birthdays or how you do your life at all or anything? Everything changes when you go online from brick and mortar. How so? But, well, with birthdays, I mean I mean, birthdays with brick and mortar in the birthdays, since we were in hospitality, you'd go there and everyone would know it's your birthday and people would sing happy birthday to you and, and all these things. And it was nice, right? You have like the, 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 the team would be there in real life singing happy birthday and giving you a cake and like saying, oh, we appreciate your leadership. Thank you, whatever. And online, we have the same vibe, like on Zoom, you know, people are saying happy birthday. They're sending love videos and they're sending good vibes. Um, it's a little different, I think. Uh, virtually, you know, than in person. In person, you're actually with the people live. So I would say that's even more potent in the brick and mortar space, right? Because you walk into the building and the whole building is vibing knowing it's your birthday. They have balloons in your office. They have a cake waiting for you. Your team comes and sings at your door of your office, for example. You know, little things here and there. Um, and then in the online space, that's one of the things that happens online is I was just actually talking to uh, someone on our team the other day about this. It's interesting because like the company is big. There's how many people, 50, 60 people in the company. Right. right. And it, but when you're sitting at home, like if you're, if you're looking to build an online business, you're at home alone, full stop, right? You're at home and you're alone. And so it's interesting because there's a massive company, or if you're doing uh, you know, Amazon business, you have all of the Amazon things happening out there um, on your behalf. And there's so many moving parts, but you're still just alone. And so when I look at brick and mortar versus virtual, there's so many pros and cons to both. I don't think one is better than the other. Both are definitely necessary. Everything we're using here came from a brick and mortar business, right? I just went out for lunch. You're going for dinner. You just drove your car. You went to a barber, like, we absolutely need them and love brick and mortar. But I think the misconception is, and I had this too, was when you're online, in some way it'll be easier. Like I thought that when I was on that island talking to you the very first time, sipping a margarita or whatever, and I was drunk and I was like, I'm going to go on the internet, bro. You know, in my mind, I was like, oh, it's going to be easy on the internet. And I get on the internet and I'm like, it's not easy. If anything, I would say it's, it's, it's an easier way to leverage softwares and networks and systems, but it's, you have to go like two, five, 10 X inward on the inner game to be able to actually push through the hard times. Because at the end of the day, it's you and your computer and a million distractions around your home mm. versus an office or a building where you have people that are working in the same direction and you can't really get distracted and you're just there to do your job, punch in, punch out, get it done sort of thing. They're massively different. It's definitely not for everyone. And I would say in the context of birthdays, it's, it's different and both are amazing. It just depends on where you're at and where you want to be and sort of the person you're becoming. Right. And for me, I'm finding myself, and this is coming from an extreme extrovert type of a person, right? Like my entire thirties were partying. It's ridiculous to say it, but it's fucking true. The entire decade was devoted to partying and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like hosting them and throwing them and being like the organizer and like, you know, the GM of the party. It's like, Hey, throw this festival for 20,000 people. Okay. You know, like doing that shit back to back to back. Yeah. 
that's a very extrovert energy. Like you're all. But at over least the you were. At least you were making money doing it. You know, yeah, I know that's I'm right. Like a bunch I mean, of other people <laughs> drinking for free and getting paid. Perfect. Uh, not a very sustainable model <laughs> yeah. for the personal health. But what I'm getting at is like that's an extroverted human doing an extrovert type of a thing. But for me, when I went online and I started getting deep into personal development and deep into the mindset of what it takes to be the version of me who I want to become more of in the future and more aligned with my values and the, the type of father you want to be and leader for your family. When you start going down that rabbit hole, the online space for me is golden and I'm becoming more and more introverted with it because I find myself just spending way more time learning, reading books, journaling, being with myself and my thoughts, and then growing and developing into the person that I want to become versus being busy, extroverting and out in the noise. That makes sense? I love the fact that you went into here because I think this is where like discipline true, like truly plays a huge part. Because as you said, when you are in an office, you're sitting there and like you have your boss right, you know, across from you or whoever else, and they're almost like micromanaging and you and you have someone like holding you accountable. And I think this is where like personal accountability comes in place as well, because like, as you said, there is a million people or a million things around you that are million distractions around you that can literally grab your attention like this. And at the same time, you're also trying to build a business at the same time. You're also trying to provide for your family and you're trying because like, for example, I, one thing that some when I first started working online, I was struggling with was I would be home and I can work from home. And that's great. Like, that's awesome. I can take my laptop anywhere. But then also my wife is right there, especially when we had just gotten married. And it's like, well, you know, I can I can get to this a little later. Hey, let's go out. Let's grab dinner. Hey, let's go. Out, let's do this. My buddy calls, hey, let's go smoke hookah or something. My, you know, my dad calls, he haven't seen you in two days, you know? And it's just easy to like fold your laptop and say, I'm going to go and, and come back to it later. And I love what you mentioned about like, this is where the internal game really plays a big part because you really need to be disciplined about who you are and the actions you take and uh, um, like how you show up. And I feel like this is where the, this is where the, um, the um what's the word the the like appealing future you know uh 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 something that you're like a north star something that's that's pulling you towards it mm. really comes in play because if you don't have an appealing future if you don't have something that you're working towards you're gonna get you're gonna allow things to be the shiny object to draw you to them and get lazy and 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 kind of make excuses and and like you know, uh, uh, say, well, I, you know, procrastinate, for example, yeah. right? Um, wh what are your views about that, about like making excuses and stuff like that, you know? Why do you think that is, or how do you think that even comes in play or like procrastination? Why do you think people procrastinate? Oh, man. Um, I, I think what you said there a second ago, you said, you know, a, being pulled to a North Star. I think that's everything, but I think there's also a step that comes before that. And again, I can only speak from my personal experience, but back, say, I don't know, four or five years ago, we were living on this island and we had established ourselves as hospitality consultants, right? So we consulted for companies and businesses and we invested sweat equity. So we would work and help consult and help manage things. And then we would get equity shares into companies, right? And so we established this and we were doing quite well with it. And then the government did some shady shit with China, shocker. And then it all just kind of went away. Literally in about 60 days, we kind of lost everything we had built over the last eight years. And this is where I had to sort of rethink what was gonna happen, what were we gonna do? And so you mentioned the North Star and something pulling you. I got to the North Star, but before the North Star of something pulling me, I was being pushed. So I was being pushed by the pain I was feeling, you know, like I remember they closed the island. It was completely empty. So picture like it's the most, it's the, it's the busiest tourist place you could possibly imagine. 
it's completely full. Like you can't even move on this island because there's so many tourists descending on it. Hundreds of thousands of people on this little seven mile long piece of land in the middle of the ocean, right? And they closed it and it was completely empty. So it was like a time warp. You went out on the beach, you could look for three miles down this white sand beach and there wouldn't be a single fucking person. Usually you couldn't even walk down that shit without bumping in, like without being like this, you know? So I remember my wife went back to visit her parents and I was there alone on the island. I didn't have any businesses. I didn't have any income. I didn't have any shares in any companies anymore. All my consulting contracts were canceled because all the businesses went under that we were consulting for. Everything just went to zero. Luckily, I had some good connections there and they helped me get like a local permit so I could stay. I was like the only foreigner there. Basically, there was like maybe five of us left. And I just stayed there for the whole summer. And this is where like we had already talked, right? And this is a couple months later. And I just stayed there the whole summer. And I just ran every day and I was getting deep into personal development, started following Tony Robbins and like seeing the internet stuff and like learning about it. And every day I would like get home and just sit on the deck. And I was, I was living in the basement of my best friend's house. Shout out Jove, if you're watching buddy. And uh, I just remember like sitting there being like, this fucking, I feel like a loser, you know? Like I felt like I lost control. I was like, what the fuck just happened? We've been here eight years working our asses off. My wife worked so hard, you know? And we had nothing to show for it. I'm just sitting at my buddy's house. Like he's gracious enough to let us stay there as long as we wanted. And, you know, he's giving me steaks and we're like living a good life. But I'm like, dude, I feel like a fucking bum. And I felt this way for a few months. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And I just felt this deep pain in me that like I wasn't providing for my family. I didn't have a stable income anymore. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have fuck all. And I was just like, it's beautiful here. The sunset's amazing. You know, I can sit here and like pet my dog and life is good, but like life sucks. Right. And I was feeling this like depression creep into me that I've never felt in my life. And I felt that way for, I don't know, a month or something. And I was just thinking and thinking and I feeling this pain. And I just, I had this pain that pushed me to take action and do something. And I just got to a point where I was like, fuck it. I have to do something. What is the thing? I don't quite know yet but I got to do something. And I had two options, man. It was one, continue down that road and go build brick and mortar with my friends who were going to do similar businesses that we had been doing on different islands. So they went off to different islands and they repeated the process of building these empires and they did amazing at it. They're fucking crushing it right now. They're super successful. Like they're killing it. I'm loving it. I watch them on social media doing their thing. I fucking love it. That's an option. The other option was go online. And I'm like, okay, I I chose online because I wanted the leverage. I wanted the, I just wanted to explore the internet. I thought that's where the future was. And so what moved me to go there and not sit on my hands every day and procrastinate and to actually go online and like do deep research, (laughs) like 15 hours a day, how to make money online. What is this affiliate shit? What is Amazon? Like, what is sales? What is this? What is that? And like learning all this shit the thing that pushed me to do it, it wasn't a future or something pulling me. It was, I had to get away from this shit. It was pain that I was in. I was like, I got to move away from this position, this position of like, I have no power left here, not geographically. The version of me had no power left. All of my skills, I couldn't put them to use at the moment. I was skillless. You know what I mean? Like I could go tell people how to run a bar, I can fucking get a hotel going. I can, my wife can do all that for spas, but none of those things exist around us right now. So I felt like I was stripped naked and I was just this fucking dude. So the pain was I needed to get a high income skill that I could leverage and use to build the lifestyle that my family deserves. And I felt the pain of not having it. And maybe you felt the same way at some point. Maybe you felt the same way at some point, but when you have that feeling inside you, like when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, something in you snaps. And I remember the day it happened for me. I was walking down the beach. We had our dog Sativa uh, running. I was running, walking with her, looking around. And I looked out at the water and I was by myself and I literally just started fucking crying, like out of nowhere. I don't even know where it happened. 
And I just started crying. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I walked home. I looked in the mirror myself. My eyes were red and I started crying again. I went and fucking cried into a pillow for like three hours. And I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like what, what just happened? I, like, why am I crying all of a sudden? I had no reason. I had nothing in my head. I just had this like snapping moment where I just like all this emotion came out of me that I've been holding for a few months. When I came out of that shit, I was like, you have to move forward. You have to stop thinking that it's the fault of the government. It's the fault of the politics. It's the fault of you living on this place. That's all fucking getting weird. All of a sudden it's not none of that. You are the one who decided to be here. You decided to build those businesses here and put all your eggs there. So like a moment of ownership, right? Even though it was out of your control, technically it's all in your control because you fucking decided to go there. Right. And so I had that snapping moment and that's when I realized I need to move out of this pain. And then I focused on, well, what do I want? And I asked myself that question that day, what do you want? And again, I got out a piece of paper, like legal pad, yellow one. And I wrote, what do I want? It's ridiculous, right? It's so simple. What do I want? And I just fucking started listing out shit. And then beside the things I wanted, I put why. So I was like, what do you want? I was like, the first thing I wrote, I want my wife to never have to fucking work again. I don't know why or where that came from, but that's what I wanted. I want my wife to never have to work again. Why? Because she's worked her ass off ever since I've met her. She's an amazing human. And I feel like she deserves it, right? She deserves to be a mom, to enjoy her life, to do all that stuff. The next thing, what do you want? I want time freedom. I want freedom to be able to do what I want, whenever the fuck I want, with whoever I want, as much as I want. I want time freedom. So it was like, make my wife completely free from anything. I want time freedom. Third thing was, I want to be able to help and contribute to other people getting the same thing, helping other people become free, helping other people get away from pain, and ultimately helping other people kind of step into their power. Because I was feeling the fire in me burning, like I'm stepping into my power right fucking now. And I was like capturing it on that piece of paper. And really what I was doing was I was transitioning away from the pain and the push from the pain to the North star. And I attached my North star to the wise. And it was all about the identity of being a provider for my family and being able to do whatever we want, whenever we want, which takes a bunch of money. It takes a bunch of time. It takes a bunch of resources. It takes a strong leader. It takes a disciplined human. Right. And I was like, that's all the shit I want to be. Okay. Well, how the fuck do I become that shit? And then I started building a plan. And about 30 days later, we flew to Europe and you and I started working together. So it was like, that was the North star that I got to. And because of the pain, recognizing it, building the North star, pushing towards it and fucking not taking no for an answer. There's no room for fucking procrastination when you have a plan. When you're in that, that state of like, fuck it. There's no room for procrastination. Why the fuck would you procrastinate? You can't wait to get out of bed in the morning and get shit done. Like you wish you didn't have to sleep. It's like, I wish I didn't have to sleep. I got lots of shit to do. My list is fucking 30 feet long of shit I need to get done. I got no time for procrastinating. Fuck procrastinating. You know, because you know where you're going and you want to go there so badly. So here is, here is the thing for me. Maybe like two years ago, what I used to think was if you're not like growing or if you don't want more for your life, you're a loser. Like literally this, this was like hard stop with me. It was like, if you're not driving, if you're not like wanting to become more, you're a fucking loser, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so the thing, this, this quest that I went on for the longest time was, well, what drives someone that doesn't have drive and how does someone find that drive? Because for me, it was, I don't want to say it was easy, but it's almost like I was born with it. You know, like I always had that drive. Like I, there was, I don't think there was ever a time in my life where I wasn't driven. I know for a short period of time after my restaurant burned down, I kind of gave up on my big dreams, mm. you know, because I always had big dreams. But for a little short while after my restaurant burned down, I thought this is all fantasy land bullshit. This is real life. 
this is what happens when you actually like live normal people's lives. You know what I mean? The, all this, all this crazy stuff that you're thinking about, this is all bullshit. But outside of that, I always had that drive. And then when I would see people around me that I truly cared about that didn't have that drive, I always wondered how the fuck do you get people to like act or do more? Like there was people like my brother, for example, I think he has the drive. I think he just, there's a bunch of like limiting beliefs that he has that have caused him to not get to where he wants to be. But he's pretty driven. Like he's always like starting these businesses, trying this thing. Like, you know, he recently, he um he like got into like crypto mining and stuff like that. That didn't go anywhere, but he's like always trying. But then you have this other side of people where they don't do shit. Like they're, they're a complete, like they look like from outside, they're a complete fucking loser. And so for me, it was always the battle of like, how do you draw, how do you create, how do you create urgency in these people's lives? Because I feel like that's what you need. You need urgency in your life. And I think what you went through is also what I went through is this like rock bottom moment of I've fucking lost it all. I feel like a fucking loser. What the fuck am I doing? I need to do something. Right. And I think this is um, like a, like a pivotal moment that Tony Robbins talks about, like leverage that was created for them. Like seven, eight months ago, the leverage that was created for me in my life was my seizure. My seizure happened. Then I started really looking at my life in a completely different way. You know, what are my my food, you know, my eating habits? What are my working out habits? Um, what am I doing to take care of me? Because I was always taking care of other people and that's very noble, but it's like you can't pour out of an empty cup. You know, and so I feel like there is there is uh well, actually, let me ask you a question. Do you think that um that drive could be like taught or could be like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know what you mean, man. Some people have it. Some people don't have it. It's like, mm. you know, I don't know. What What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think everybody has it. They just haven't tapped into it. Okay. I think there's a possibility that people um, haven't had the opportunity to get around others to learn the the tools and the strategies that it takes to get yourself into a position where you actually want to fucking move for yourself and not for others. Okay. And I think that comes from um, understanding personal values, right? I, I feel like you know, one of the things that was really powerful for me that we always take our team through and our students go through this a lot as well, right? It's like looking at your values, looking at your past values. Okay, well, if you're at home right now, you can do this quick exercise. It's like, take a piece of paper, ask yourself, what did I value five years ago? And just write down as many things as you can quickly, right? So like when I do this exercise, I look at that and I'm like, well, I valued, you know, being the center of attention, I valued being able to throw the best party, right? I valued knowing the DJs and being behind the DJ fucking booth with the bottle of tequila and being seen there. It's ridiculous to say now, but like that was the version of me. I valued uh, looking successful, even though I wasn't doing that well financially, it looked like I was because I was uh, everywhere all the time. So it's like the perception value and then on the other side of the piece of paper, you want to write down what are the values of the version of you you want to see in five years from now, right? So you think to yourself, well, where do I want to be in five years? Okay, well, I want to do X financially. I want to do X with my family. You know, I want to do X contribution to your church or your, your um, foundations or whatever you want to do. I want to be in X shape, right? I want my blood work to come back to certain levels on certain things, cholesterol down, testosterone up. You know what I mean? Like that's where I want to be. Okay. So now I see these two super different versions. This is the old me. That's for real because I remember that guy and there they are. This is the version I want to become and I'm working towards. And so now when I look at that, if you go into like a visualization meditation type of a state and you see that version of you, it's like, okay, well, how does this guy stand? How does he walk into a room? What does his fucking bank account look like? How does he treat people around him? How is he serving the community, the team, the students? How, how does his wife look at him? How do the kids perceive him? Is he a leader for the family? Okay. That's how that guy is. Those are the values. That's the human. 
if you want to become that fucking guy, there's no goddamn way you're sleeping in and eating fucking potato chips. What you're doing is you're getting up and going for a run or a walk or something. And you're like putting down some creatine and going to the gym and eating protein and reading fucking three books and getting your ass to work and getting inside a system where you can generate massive amounts of income for you and your family and the people around you. And then put that into smart places all the while, you know, increasing your physical presence in all ways, mentally, spiritually, um, emotionally, right? Tapping into your inner wisdom. It's like the more you want to move towards this person with those values, that gives you the fucking drive. So I feel if people don't have the drive, I don't think that they don't know who they want to be. I think down deep when they're sleeping at night and they look up at the, at the, at the ceiling when they're in bed, they think, fuck, it'd be nice to be a little bit thinner. Man, I wish I had a bit more money. It'd be really cool to treat my parents to a holiday. My daughter has ballet tomorrow, but I don't get to go to it because I got to go to a job I hate. Wish I, had a, wish, wish I had some freedom. Start thinking all these things. And all you have to do is go a little bit further and think, well, okay, well, what version of me can make that shit come true? There's your drive. Get up in the morning, build a fucking plan. Napoleon Hill, right? Success takes a plan. It's one of his favorite quotes. It's like, yeah, build a plan towards the version you want to be. There's your drive. But if you don't do the work, you don't know it. So if you don't know it, you're sort of in limbo land and you get caught up in social media and the news and all these current events and you just sort of get sucked into this, this sort of monotonous, repetitive thing where you just stay the old version of you and that just becomes normal and we're creatures of habit. So you fall into these habits. So I think everyone has the drive. They just have to tap into their future version and build a plan around it and understand that it is possible to get there. If other people did it, you can do it. This guy was fat, now he's ripped. This lady, you know, couldn't have kids, now she has four kids. This guy was broke, now he's rich. Whatever, people can get there. If they can get there, you can get there. Build a plan, that'll drive you. But again, doing the work internally to know that, that's the first step. And I think that's the step that a lot of people, if they say they don't have drive, they're procrastinating, they're putting things off. I just feel like they've missed that first little step there. And I feel like that's an easy step but not unless you have a mentor, a coach, a community around you, people to drive you and push you and sort of educate you in these ways. You know, that's what it did for me. Yeah, I love that because um, I, I remember and I've said this uh, in many uh, in many uh, podcasts and stuff like that. Many people as well. I remember when I was um, when I was in college, I I I used to consider myself lazy and a procrastinator, you know, now looking back at it, I see a lot of people putting labels on themselves or on other people that they know, especially loved ones, because it's like if you don't have the awareness, you also don't have filters. And the words that we use create the emotions that we have, you know, that we actually feel. Right. And so, like, I, for example, this morning, my trainer was like, hey, man, how do you feel? I was going to go into what I always say. Oh, you know, my shoulder is a little sore. My back is a little this. My that is a little that. Instead, I was like, I feel fucking great. And that, for whatever reason, created this like this drive at the gym that I normally don't have because I'm always like, oh, my shoulder is sore. Okay, so then I'm not going to really go that hard on bench press today. My wrist hurts. Well, when I do curls, I might not go as hard, you know? Mm. And so going back to uh, the labels that we put on ourselves, I remember I would be in school. I would be like, I would open a book and I would sit in front of a, a, a book. And I would have an exam in two days and I would literally, like a fly would go by a mile away, I would turn around. I would like my mind, I could never get my mind to actually finally focus and get the thing done. And then now looking back at it, it was not that I was lazy or a procrastinator. I was just uninspired. I was not inspired about the topic that I was learning. I was not inspired about going to school because I didn't have a compelling future because I didn't have, um, you know, I guess there wasn't uh, something that I was, that was painful enough for me to like, that I was trying to get away from, you know, I was comfortable. I was living with my parents. Everything was okay. You know, I had like, I had, uh, uh, I guess enough. And I think that's also another thing where people, um, where people, uh, um, uh, 
get sucked into is that like having enough like i you know like doing good is that that good status it's like you know when you when we follow you know when we listen to to, to tony robbins it's always like outstanding it's the kind of standard that you always want to be going after you know yeah. you you get what you tolerate you know mm. and so whenever we get into those habits of labeling ourselves or seeing ourselves doing something that uninspires us like you said earlier going to a job that you hate well you're probably not going to want to progress in that job and then you go into this like this like down cycle of of feed, of negative feedback loop because your job does not inspire you therefore you're not fulfilled therefore you don't want to grow and this is what drives growth and internal fulfillment right yeah is when you're actually growing when you're actually feel like you're truly contributing when you feel like you're adding value when you feel like you're growing and again contribute and then you know and then you're just kind of like going back but well let me ask you this how can one snap out of that? You know, how can one like come out of that? Because you can get stuck in this like down downside spiral of you're doing okay. You're not starving. Cause I think this is where like, I mean, I, I don't know, like say in America, there's what 300 and some 20, you know, 320 million uh, people. I think 60 or 70% are middle-class. I don't have exact stats. So we're talking about a couple hundred million people and middle class is not starving, not poverty, but not ultra wealthy. And, and, and they don't have everything they need. It's they have enough to do one, two, three, potentially save up a little bit, do this, do that. They're living average. How can one snap out of that when there isn't that high leverage and be able to go into this, you know, the trajectory of like having abundance in life, not just having enough in life you know yeah well i i i i believe it's not for everyone man i think the majority of people are content being just having enough and they just are cool with it and even if they even if they knew that they could work extra hard and get extra leverage and do these things i think a lot of times people kind of are okay with it and i think it's okay you know but but don't you think it's unfair though it's unfair to for them yeah they're unfair to mm -hmm. themselves i'm sure but i feel like you know it's one of those it, it's like if someone what's the word what's that saying ignorance is bliss or whatever yeah i guess you have to define like if you believe that's true or not is ignorance bliss it's hard to say right if you don't know about something and you're ignorant to what could possibly be the outcome if you reverse that spiral and you go up. If you're completely ignorant to it, then it's not affecting you and you're still going to live there and be happy. But if you are aware... But are you, are you happy though is the question. Well, that's, that's the question. I, I'd say back in the day, yeah. I think the thing is now, social media, the, the speed at which we get information, how fast we get news, how quickly you can fucking just go on Google and see, you know, the net worth of someone or, you know, so-and-so bought a new fucking yacht or you got these guys driving around in Lambos and shit and people see it, right? Before they wouldn't see it. You'd be at home, you'd be working in the factory, you, you know, go to your local pub or whatever, hang out with your friends and it would just sort of be that. But now the second you open your phone, you can just immediately, it's like buy a condo in Dubai, half a million dollars, oceanfront beautiful you're like holy fuck that's nice so i think a lot of people now are aspiring for more more than ever if that makes sense i think ignorance has been bliss before we had the speed of information that we have now i think now everybody who is on the internet which is fucking everybody that they see what's possible mm. and i feel like they either go one or two ways one way is yeah for them they can do it because they're special and they know something I don't know. And like, it's sort of a bit of a, a hater energy. It's like, yeah, they can do it. Fuck those guys. Or on the other side of it, you get someone who's inspired by it. They're like, wow, look what that person did. Holy shit. If they did it, I can do it. So there's these two different energies to look at. Both people want the same thing. Both are looking at it from a different way. The thing is the person who's looking at it from a hater perspective can also switch their paradigm if they start working on themselves, 
Because if they start working on themselves, and it, I, I will always go back to inner work and personal development, always. If they're working on themselves, journaling their thoughts, looking at their core values, meditating about what they want, thinking about where they are now, being fucking truthful, looking in the mirror and like telling themselves they love you, I love you, I love you, in the eyes, try that shit, you will cry. If you do that and you stick with that, and you learn about who you truly are and what you're capable of. Because when you go inward, you realize how strong you are. None of this shit fucking matters. When you're inside, you understand how strong you are. If you open up your eyes and you see, oh shit, look at that place in Dubai. Oh, look at that guy in the Ferrari. Oh, look at this person doing that. Look at that person who just built an Amazon business and retired their parents. Look at this guy who's doing this over here. Wow, these people are awesome. If you're doing the inner work, you will think to yourself, I can do that shit too. If you're not doing the inner work and you're just being sort of mundane about what you feed into your mind and you're just like scrolling Instagram or TikToks and just being entertained with dancing or whatever. I mean, I love dancing, but like if you're being entertained, watching Netflix, watching movies, not really like putting inputs that make you smarter or make you think they just entertain you like dancing clowns versus someone giving a lecture about something interesting. If you're stuck in that low vibe, when the good stuff comes across your, your, your reality, you won't catch it. See what I mean? So it's like, if something comes into your reality that is like, oh man, these people are successful. They're doing really well. I'd love to be like that. So I could have that, that lifestyle with my family too. I wish I could go there with my kids. And you see that family fucking posting their pictures on Instagram. If you're vibing down here because you're not doing any inner work, you, it passes by you and you view it like you can't do it. If you're doing inner work and, so, and you're vibing so he, high, you will see it and you'll think I can. Uh -huh. and, you, and you'll be like, dope, congrats. Let me see how you did that. Who did you learn that shit from? So again, it comes to where you are on the spectrum, right? And if you're vibing way higher than where they're at, if you've been deep in the game and you're like on fire, you pass by them, you're going to pull them up somehow. It's like a chain. I'm with you and I'm following and I'm always, I've always had the mindset of you can never hate on success. I just can never no. hate on success. But here is the problem that I see and I'm playing the devil's advocate here because like you open Instagram, for example, and you see like what you see on Instagram is not even fucking real. Like we know this, you know, yeah. like. I have friends that that I know personally, and when I look at their Instagram, I'm like, fuck, I want to be like this guy, <laughs> but I know who this person is, you know? Yeah. And. I feel like. Social media has been great to us because it's provided us so much awareness. And I think it's an incredible. I mean, it's brought speed to information like never before. Right. But the other problem with social media is that I see nowadays and I see a lot of people getting in that. And I feel like this is where and why people get, become bitter because they look at things and they just do not look real. And the other person tries to like, overcomplicate or or not just overcomplicate but over exaggerate the reality and i feel like that goes back to what you said the inner work hmm. right because it's like why why is it that someone will go rent a car and pretend that it's their car and take a bunch of pictures of it and post it on social media because they want validation because they need significance like what you said me five, 10 years ago, I wanted to be the guy with the bottles. I wanted to be the guy behind the DJ. I wanted to be the guy. And that was me as well. Like my restaurant, no one could tell me what to do. The biggest reason why my restaurant burned down was because I would not take no one's advice because mm. I knew it all. I used to remember there was a guy that used to work um, at the restaurant. He would be like, You've got this. He's like, he's like, you know who who you remind me of? I'm like, who? He's like George Clooney. I'm like, George Clooney. <laughs> I'm not that fucking good looking. What the there fuck you are go. you talking about? He's like, 
He's like, no, you have this smirk. You know how George Clooney has like, he's like, he's always like smirking, you know? Yeah. It's like, you have this smirk when you walk around. I'm like, okay. He's like, what it feels like is like, you know, so much stuff that no one else around you knows. <laughs> and I used to feel that way. I used to truly feel that way. Like I used to feel like I'm up here where everyone is like down here that I knew so much more. And it was because I had not done the internal work. It was because I had not truly figured out my, what my true values are. I had not figured out my true why is. I had not figured out what my North Star in life is. And when you have people that are thriving for, uh, uh, for the image and for the significance and for being the guy, and then you've got the other guy that's barely making it, and it looks at these guys... And it's like, well, this is not real. The only thing that they can do is hate on them, right? Mm -hmm. But as you said, to your point earlier, I think both of them, if they stop doing what they're doing and actually look inward instead of outside, because we're always looking out there to feel happy. It's like, when I make $10,000, then I'll be happy. When I make a million dollars, and it's like the number always increases. When mm -hmm. I make 100,000, I'll be happy. When I make a million dollars, I'll be happy. It's like, people think that when they make more money, they're going to have less problems or they're going to be happier or more fulfilled. But we both know that that's not the case. No, not even close. We, not even close. We both know that like when you, and this is why part of BJK University and what we want to do in the future is create retreats and create places for people and programs for people where it has nothing to do with how much money they make or, or what they're doing financially but it's all about internal work. It's all, all about their relationships, their emotions, their health, you know? Yeah. Because if you don't take care of that, everything else goes to shit. Like I remember up until uh, my seizure happened last year, for me, everything had to do with success. Everything that had to do with success was tied to financial success. Hmm. You are successful based on how much money you have in the bank, based on how big your company is, based on how big of a career you have, based on how much you're trying to make financially. I had never looked into my health, my relationships, my emotions. I mm. never knew what my values were in life. I didn't know any of those. And it had to, it had, there needed to be a big event that happened in my life that, took me away from all that and and like opened up my eyes on this whole new um on this whole new like arena this whole new area of my life that I had never cared for mm. you know and now I have five pillars to success and instead of just one because to be successful like I don't want to be a multi-billionaire that's overweight that has two divorces that's got five kids that don't even talk to him that, you know, doesn't have any meaningful relationships in life. Like, I don't want to be that guy. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, I totally know what you mean. It's interesting because I think you and I, I, we're obviously very similar in a lot of ways. But I think the funny thing here is that we have the exact same journey, but opposite. Mm, how so? Yeah, because so you had how much money is in my bank account? is the definition of success for many, many years. And then now it's like, okay, health and family, and you've added all these other pillars, right? Yeah. You've had the money, right? You've had millions in your bank account for how many years now, right? So it's like the money's the money. We can talk about what money does for you and problems in a second, but I had that block of time in Southeast Asia where I made okay money, not a ton, enough to live there. And living there is very fucking cheap. You know what I mean? So like yeah. I would make like, thousand bucks a month, 1500 bucks a month. And like, that would be a lot to live where we lived. The second that I would leave there to go back to Canada, visit my parents or like, we didn't even come to Europe. Like I didn't have any fucking money. You know what I mean? And so when I was on the Island and this Island, again, it's like the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's like paradise from a fucking fairy tale. And so when I was there, I remember waking up every day for years, years, and I would basically say to myself, like, money is not everything. You're healthy. You have, you're putting on board shorts right now. You don't have to go to an office. Like I used to work in a bank. I used to work in corporate America and Singapore. I hated that shit. 
And so I'm like, I'm wearing board shorts. I don't have to put it like, I'm going out to the beach right now. It's 9 a.m. I'm going to go for a walk with my dog. I'm going to eat a mango, visit my friends, drive my motorbike. Then I'm going to go host a party later. And then like, that's my day, right? And just rinse and repeat that shit for years. So I had like the thought of, I don't need a bunch of money to be happy. Mm. Like I'm happy right now. I'm in pretty good shape. I got a suntan. I wear my board shorts every day. And then when I had that moment of, of extreme pain, it was when that went away. And I realized I didn't have a way to get where I truly wanted to go when I reassessed my values, right? I reassessed my values and I was like, okay, well, this is the stuff I want. Retire my wife, do this, do that, do this. And I was like, dude, that's, and I put dollar signs on it. I was like, that's a lot of fucking zeros. And I can't do that with what I have right now. Like I can't, I got board shorts on and you know, a two pack, not a six pack, I got a couple little stomach muscles. I'm like living the beach life. I'm like kind of healthy and eating a mango, but like, I, I don't, can't do any of that shit. Right. So that's when I had the moment of like, I need to get my shit together financially. So I had many, many years of like, money's not everything. You don't need it just enough to get by is fine, which is very weird for me because I used to work in banks and corporate where I thought money was everything. So I like, I had this massive shift, right? I went from working in a bank. I want to get rich to like, fuck money. I'm going to live to an Island and I don't need money. Let's just wear bare feet every day. Did that for a long time. And then I got to a point where I was like, no, no, I need money. (laughs) And then I was like, no, no, I need a lot of money. Then I was like, holy fuck, I need a new skill. Right. And that's when the internet came. But then I had the moment like, like you, you said you focused on only success and you sacrificed your health and stuff, right? Like you would just work and is that right? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. So when I moved to Italy, my wife and I decided, okay, like time to turn a new page, try something new, work on the internet. I don't know what that means yet, but let's see. We moved to Rome into this little one bedroom apartment, $800 a month in a shitty part of Rome in the ghetto of Rome fucking random place to move to. I know, but we did it. It was fun. And so we got, I remember, (laughs) I know exactly. Right. And so then we started working together and I was like, okay, like I found a vehicle here, right? I found the internet. I found a vehicle in the internet. I found a business partner who I trust and I can see a future here. I can see all these things. I can see the zeros and I'm like, this can get me there. Right. I had that like click. And so I'm like, okay. And I spent the next fucking two years. So it's been like three years now, roughly with us. Right. So the the first two years was in Rome mostly. And like, I told my wife straight up directly. I was like, I'm not doing anything but work. I mean, nothing. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to fucking skip showers. Like I'm not going to sleep a whole lot. I'm not going on any trips or anything. I, we don't have any money. It's like, I'm not doing anything but work. And I have like this long list of things that I need to do. Right. And so like, I just got after it and I was just smashing out like, I don't know how many hour days, just every minute I was awake, I would roll out of my bed, stumble to my chair, work on the computer with you, do shit. 16, 18 hours later, Eyes are like that, stumble back to bed, have a quick shower, sleep for a few hours, get up and like rinse and repeat that shit every fucking day, seven days a week for like two years. Right. And at the end of it, I was a little bit fat, not a little bit. I was kind of fat, (laughs) right? I was fat. I was like, but I was making pretty good fucking money. And I started solving some money problems. Mm. You know, my wife didn't have to work. We started, we moved to a better apartment with a nice view in the center of the city, different city, nicer part of city, right? We upscaled our lifestyle, took a couple trips here and there, helped out some family with some financial stuff, you know, started living a better lifestyle. And as soon as the money problems were solved, and you were the one who even said, it's like, you know, don't, don't even flinch until you have a couple hundred K in the bank or whatever. And then you can think about investing or doing whatever the fuck. And I I was like, yeah, good call. So as soon as there was a little bit of money in the bank, just a little bit, I was like, okay, money problems are solved. The machine, I understand how it works. The internet, I get it. 
now I can take like half a step over here and like, I'm going to go for a run this morning, Mm. you know, and I'm going to start kind of getting back on that health tip a bit. And I did the same thing. A lot of people do in that moment. I joined 75 hard with Andy Frisella. And that was the thing I did. I was like, fuck it. Like how else can I do this? But go 75 hard. I did it. And I finished it and I'm fucking, I, I failed the first time, like day four and I started again and I did it. My wife held me super accountable and uh, yeah. And then after that, you know, you just start putting the pieces together. And now this year I'm, I'm very balanced, you know, still putting in 15 hour days. Cause we actually love what we do. It's not because you have to solve money problems or, Oh my God, I got to make the, you know, it's not that anymore. Not even close. It's like, I fucking love the team. I love working with everybody. I love our students. I love the mission we're on. And it's just fun to do it. Like I love sitting in my desk and working. It's fun. But then there's also like, hey, let's go for a swim. Let's go for a walk. Let's go shopping at the the nice uh, Whole Foods or whatever the fuck, right? Let's go for a nice steak dinner. Let me go buy a bunch of cigars and smoke those because those are super healthy. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) (laughs) more balance over time. But I think at the beginning, if you really want to like break through, you have to fucking get uncomfortable and sacrifice a bunch of shit, like almost everything, you know, it's, it's interesting how, um, it's very interesting how you said, you know, uh, I actually still work 15 hour days and I actually enjoy what I do because one of the biggest reasons, like I know right now, you know, you're very involved with our sales team and stuff like that, and you're leading them and you guys have done an incredible job. But when I was still on the phone talking to prospects wanting to enroll in BJK University, the very first thing or one of the the most common things that uh, that would come up all the time was, well, I don't want to be 65 and retire. I want to retire at 40 or I want to retire at 30 or I want to retire at 50 or, you know, mm. And, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. But then now when I look back at it, I'm like, dude, the goal should never be to retire. No, fuck retiring. The, the goal should be to never have to work again, but work because you fucking love what you do. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yes. Like, like I again, I w- last week I was with Tony Robbins for a whole fucking week, five days from 12 p.m. until 2 a.m., 14 hours for five days. A 64 fucking year old who this is his year number 46 that he's been doing this. He's got two seminars like those per month, Hmm. right? And he's traveling all over the world. This motherfucker is worth over a billion dollars. He does not need to do all this shit. (laughs) Like I'm looking at him like, I love you. I don't know if I want to build a company this way. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But it's like, it's like, dude, the guy shows up every day and he does it. Not because he needs to. Last the last day we went to his house in Sun Valley sits on there's a mountain that has three properties. One of them is his. His house sits on 80 acres of land next to a hot spring. The house was like stupid. Like I I can't even like explain to you. There was literally 400 people at his house (laughs) and it was like nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sounds like a shack. Dude, I, (laughs) I can't even I can't even start describing what it looked like. Yeah. Right. He doesn't need to work, but he works because he fucking loves it. He's going to I mean, this guy's probably going to live one hundred and seventy five. He's all about stem cells and shit like that. And he's yeah. probably fucking injecting like a million dollars worth of stem cells every morning or something, you know. <laughs> so this guy's going to be forever. And I bet you he will continue to do what he does because yeah. he loves it, because it's his mission, because it's the thing that drives him. So the goal, like anyone that's watching, if you're watching right now, the goal for you should not be to not to work or to retire, but it should be to not have to work and still fucking work because you're enjoying what you're doing because you're doing something that you love. Limiting beliefs, it, we all have them in all areas of life, right? Like we have limiting beliefs about what we physically can do. We have limiting beliefs about what's possible inside uh, our businesses. We have limiting beliefs about if someone will say yes to you at a dance, you know, as like teenagers or whatever. Limiting beliefs are fucked up and they stop you from doing all the sorts of shit that you can and should be able to accomplish in your life. Right. What do you think about limiting beliefs in general? Like if I said to you, like, have you had some, what are they? Like, have you, have you recognized any in yourself on, in your journey? Oh, dude. I mean, until now I'm still uncovering limiting beliefs that I have. Yeah. Um, well, here is one, uh, for example, 
Uh, and this is more about like what do we do with BJK University and everything else. For the longest time, um, I thought that we are like when it came to like programs or when it came to like doing different things, I always thought that there is a specific consumer that we are targeting. You know, this is like our avatar. This is the person that we're going after. But then I realized that there is this whole other area of consumers that we're not, you know, we're not targeting or we're not helping. Mm. And for me, it was no, but this is like, this is our avatar. We're, we're like B2C, we're business to consumer. This is more of B2B. This is the guy that's got like $50,000, $100,000 in the bank. Uh, I'm going after the guy that is, is, you know, that's got 4,000, 5,000, $10,000 in the bank that wants to start a business that's never started a business. Like this is our niche, right? This is the person that we're targeting. And this is the person that we, that we, that BJK University got created to help. And then I realized like literally this last week, I was like, we're on a mission to impact a million lives. These are lives and these are lives, right? Why is it that I have this kind of like discrimination in my mind between who we should go after? This is a person that wants to start a business online. Great. We have a skill that can help you. This is a person who's got $50,000 in the bank that's got maybe a great career. Maybe it's a doctor. Maybe it's a lawyer whatever. And they also want to start a business that has second stream of income or they have a second stream of income so they can also impact their lives. They can impact the lives of their of their of their family. Maybe they want to give back to their to their uh, to their church, to their to the charities that they support. We have a skill that works. Why don't we employ it to also help them? And so I'm always uncovering these limiting beliefs that I have until today. And sometimes I, I heard Alex Harmozy say this. He said, you know what I realized? I realized that people who have accomplished more success in a certain area than me, it's not about what they have that I don't have, but it's about what they don't have that I have. Mm -hmm. nice. It's like, what is the thing that they have already cut? What's the piece of fat that they've cut out of their life and pushed away that's not holding them back? You know, Tony Robbins talks about this all the time is, Having too many rules will make it difficult for you to accomplish your goals or to get fulfillment in life. So we have all these rules and it's not, I feel like a lot of these limiting beliefs and a lot of these rules that we have in our lives, in our minds, they're not things that we've added. Obviously, some of them we've added, but a lot of them are cultural. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are things that we've grown up with. Like if I, I was actually on a phone the the second day that I was skiing, one of my friends back home in San Diego called me. And, I, and I'm talking to him, I'm like, hey, open FaceTime. Let me show you where I'm at. And I show him. And the first thing he told me is like, what the fuck? Why are you there? This this like white people shit. I was like, what the fuck? First of all, that's racist as fuck. <laughs> second of all, why would you say that? He's like, skiing? Since, when's the, since when do you ski? And yeah. then... So whatever, like, you know, we got on the conversation and I got off the phone with him and I was, and, and then I started like thinking, I'm like, why did he say that? And I was like, well, because culturally we don't like Arabs don't ski, you know, like, <laughs> like I've never skied. I've never had a friend that's actually gone skiing. And then, you know, I was there and I was looking around. It's like a bunch of white people, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, okay, that, that's cool. But that's like a cultural thing, you know? Yeah. And so there's all these things that have been implanted in our lives in our minds throughout our, our life that now become the way that like we live life by these blueprints hmm. and something that i've learned from tony is if you want to continue to find success and find fulfillment in life you need to change your blueprint as you progress through life because if you have the same blueprint that you had when you were in asia you would probably be stressed the fuck out right now hmm. you know if you had the same blueprint, if you have the same blueprint today, five years from today, it'll probably be very difficult for you to 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 find fulfillment in life, to to find success in life. You have to change your blueprint and your thought process and the things that you that the way I guess the lens lenses, yeah. right? The mm -hmm. lens that you see life through uh, as you go and as you progress. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to progress. But it all comes back to awareness, though. That's the biggest thing for me right now 
is trying to make myself aware of as much possible around me. What are yeah. your thoughts on this? Dude, spot on, man. Um, first of all, yeah, lots of white people skiing, lots of dudes like me, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 100%. Um, but yeah, man, it's 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 what's like embedded in you, right? It's uh, there. There's um, there's things in your genes you, that you can't deny. You know what I mean? Like your your grandparents, 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 grandparents didn't fucking ski. Neither does his. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like earlier when I was talking about values and looking at your old values and looking at the future version of you's values, this is changing the blueprint because your values define your activity, right? You're, def you're defined by your behavior. Behavior is rooted in your values, right? So if you're needing to change your blueprint constantly, it means you need to constantly upgrade your values and update your values, right? Right. And then the lens you're looking through, classic NLP stuff, it's like when you take something in and perceive it here in real time or your parents or grandparents and it's like embedded in your DNA, it's coming through a lens that then your experiences and your bloodlines experiences of that event or the event similar to it are defining it. That definition is being processed and creating an emotion and then out comes reality to you. That's why all of our realities are different, right? Nobody sees shit the same as the next guy because we all have different histories. We've experienced different things. Our experiences create how we uh, perceive things and then that creates our reality, right? So your buddy there, he just has the perception of why you're doing that. That's not what we do. It's fucking weird. If he went and did a ton of work on himself and really got clear on what he wants from life deeply, I'm 100% certain, and I don't know him at all, I'm 100% certain if I talk to him on the phone and I ask him a couple questions, I could get him to tell me, I want to, you know, ultimately help my family uh, live their best life. I want to provide for my kids or my sister or like retire my parents. I want to contribute to my family in some way or my friends. You know, I want to have freedom to travel or I want to have freedom to take time to myself and do what I want or I want to contribute to my church or there'd be some sort of activity around that all of us down deep want that shit. And if you took him or you watching to the next level and you start looking at your values, well, what are the values? What is the blueprint that I need to be to do that shit? The second you start working towards that, if you really go down the line and you go deep in these rabbit holes, you're going to end up with understanding that Tony Robbins is probably the most famous, successful, inspiring human when it comes to mindset and growth that the world has ever fucking known. Like he's in the top echelon of that. You got him, Napoleon Hill, a couple guys, that's it, right? So if your friend wanted to go deep on this journey to provide for his family, he would go down a rabbit hole of personal development to turn into the man he needs to be to do that. Right. Then he's gonna bump into Tony Robbins and be like, this is the guy. And there's other guys like him. Then he's going to go make a bunch of money and invest into Tony Robbins. And then he's going to fucking find himself at Tony's house in Sun Valley skiing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sound familiar? So it's like, if his lens was that of being the future version of him and he went way down these rabbit holes to do that shit, to make it fucking true. Mm. Hey, bro, I'm skiing. What are you doing skiing? Oh, I'm at Tony's private retreat for his personal clients. Fuck yeah. That's epic, bro. I love it. Send me a picture. You know, sounds awesome. Versus, hey man, I'm skiing. Why the fuck are you skiing? Right? It's the same question, but the intentional, the intentionality behind the question is not the same. Right. Right? If you would have texted me, hey, I'm skiing, my first thing would be like, holy fuck, heads up. Right? Pizza. 
like yeah. pizza, <laughs> you know, number one, pizza. Number two, we need you alive here, founder, CEO. Okay, take it easy. Bunny Hill, please. But then the second thing would be like, if I, if I didn't know you and what you were doing there, I honestly would be like, why, why are you skiing? That doesn't seem like something you would do. Just a holiday or like, what are you doing there? Curious, true curiosity to yeah. a friend. Hey, buddy, like why? Oh, I met Tony Robbins' this thing and it's fucking bad. I'd be like, holy shit. All right, when you get back from that, number one, I want your notes. And number two, I need to know your blueprint that got you fucking there because that's epic. Right. You see what I mean? So it's like yes. the perspective you're coming from where you're at determines how you respond to what other people are up to. You can either be inspired by it or you can just not and just kind of hate on it or something, you know? Yes. Hmm. Love that. Hmm. How does one get there, though? Well, I'll ask you. You're the fucking guy skiing with Tony Robbins. How did you get there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, I, I, could, I could theoretically tell you how to get there. You fucking are there. So what's up? Let me get my notepad. <laughs> 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 um, well, let me ask you, man. How, how did you go from... I mean, everyone knows your story, right? It's like, had the restaurant, restaurant burnt down, had a big ego, you were doing your thing, no one can tell me what to do, lost it all, went online, failed a couple times, kept pushing, got resourceful, got your wife to help you financially to get it going, worked your fucking ass off, made millions, built a team, made more millions, contribute to massive foundations and you do great work. And now you're deep in the personal development journey with Tony Robbins right? Living your best fucking life. No question. Super inspiring. So how the fuck did that happen, dude? Let's, let's go there and let you talk for the next 18 hours. Cause I want to hear that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how you said like you went into personal stuff first and kind of like, uh, like health and spirituality and that kind. And then mm -hmm. that drove you into, uh, you know, okay, now I got to make money and build all these things. It was the complete opposite for me. So for me, it was about money. It was about making money. If I like, this is kind of the one thing that I knew since I was a little kid is that I needed to make money in order for me. Well, before the money I needed, I was, I was always, I always felt like I was distant to do something big. I didn't know what, since I was a little kid, the very first inspiration was my dad because my dad was a successful entrepreneur back in Iraq. And was always like traveling. He was like the, was like a mover, a shaker, was very respected by the community. People came to him for advice, you know? And, and I looked up to him. He was, he would always be dressed like, you know how Darren shows up to meetings, always yeah. like dressed in a, in a suit. Oh yeah. Like always until this day, my dad is like that. Now, not a full suit, but he's always like dressed and stuff like that. You know, kind of the complete opposite of me. I'm just like always <laughs> in the same shirt and same jeans. Um, but I looked up to him like that was like in the Middle East in the 80s. That was like that was the the, the model. You know, this is how you were supposed to look like for you to gain respect. And especially in Iraq it was all about respect. You know, like respect is like when you say something, you got to fucking show up and do it. You know, so for him, it was like his word was his bond, you know, and he inspired me a ton and I wanted to be like him now. I learned a ton from his journey and, and why he failed and was never able to, to, to get up, which are things that I've done with BJK University and how I lead and stuff like that. But I knew that it was about making money. I knew that I had to make money. And I knew I had to make a lot of fucking money. If I wanted to live the kind of life that I wanted, I had to make a lot of money. And so for, I don't know, 12 years, that's what I chased. I chased making a lot of fucking money. And it was about starting a business to make a lot of money. That's that's all I knew. I'm going to start a business and make a lot of money. I'm going to start another business, make a lot of money. And it was just that, right? And then after I had done all that, it honestly took a, a tragic situation in my life in order for me to go from just focused on financial success to success now isn't just about finances, but it's about all these other areas of life and it honestly was a survival mechanism for me because I would wake up every single day, stress the fuck out, anxiety, panic attacks. I would not be able to get out of the house because the minute we would get into the car, the minute we would leave, I would start having a panic attack and just simply start shaking 
thinking that I'm about to have another seizure, right? And the thing that I feel, and I believe now looking back at it, that got me there was Tony Robbins talks about, and, and fuck, I feel like this this podcast like sponsored by the Tony <laughs> Robbins, you know? We love some Tony. Yeah. We love us some Tony around here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? True. The thing that he talks about is your potential is 80% psychology and 20% skills. Fact. And for 12 years, I had only focused on psychology. That was the only thing that I had done, right? I had only focused on wanting to, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I had only focused on skill yeah. I for 12 years, right? It was, I need to get my skills better. I need to, to, to you know, make sure that uh, um, I have, I know how to say, I know how to do sales. I know how to do marketing. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. Those were literally the only things that I was focused on for 12 years. Hmm. And then I found myself in this situation that I didn't have control over. I would, I, I couldn't control it anymore. Right. Because I had, when my seizure happened at that point, I had launched nine businesses, seven of which had failed. I had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I had, uh, 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 you know, been to jail. I know that kind of sounds sounds a little dangerous, <laughs> but you know, I got a DUI, spent the night in jail. You know, so I went through that experience, which is a you know, if you haven't done it, it's kind of a yeah. a terrifying experience. You know, getting the fucking handcuffs being put on you, getting shoved in the back of a police car, like it's not a very pleasant yeah. thing. You know, I wake you up. Exactly right. I had gone through all that and never experienced the level of anxiety. But when my seizure happened, I realized that I was now dealing with something that I couldn't control. It wasn't something I can touch and feel. You know, when I was going to court and dealing with the judge and my case and stuff like that for my DUI, it wasn't in front of me. I could deal with it. I could do some research. When I was dealing with uh, 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 financial loss. It was in front of me. I can deal with it. But when I was dealing with with like a health issue, it was something that I had never dealt with. And leading up to it for about a year prior to that, I mean, I had been exercising uh, four or five times a week. I had been eating healthy. Hell, we we have a you know we had a chef coming to to our house. They they still come to our house and cook for us. So I thought I was actually doing very well when it came to my health. And out of nowhere, bam, I'm on the floor having a seizure. And now it's like, well. Well, what the fuck happens now? I mean, this thing happened out of nowhere. I don't know what triggered it. Doctors don't know what triggered it. It's like, well, how do I go about life? How do I like trust the drive? How do I trust to go out? How do I trust to do this? How do I trust to do that? And then my mind starts spiraling over to all these different things. And that's because I had not focused too much on my psychology. I feel like I had always had the drive. I had always had the motivation. I had always had the... the um the the resilience those were kind of things that i i don't know i guess i was born with them and over time i developed more but i hadn't really spent a lot of time on my psychology on how to deal with such losses how to deal with things that you cannot control mm -hmm. and that's the thing i i i don't know who said it once he said if you try to control everything you control nothing and all of my life, I always try to control everything. I always needed to be in charge. I always needed to be able to touch everything and micromanage everything. Well, with my health, I couldn't do shit about it because mm -hmm. the doctor is saying there is nothing wrong with you. The, the, the MRI comes back negative. Blood test comes back negative. And it's like, well, it's not like they're telling me, okay, you've got this disease. Okay, well, we can treat it now. They're telling me there's nothing wrong with you. Well, how the fuck, when, why did, did the seizure happen? Yeah. And so I literally found myself in this place of desperation. I was sleeping two hours a day. I lost like 10, 000, uh, 10 pounds in a week. I couldn't do anything and I couldn't function. And I had all these dreams. I had all these desires that I wanted to still do. And I still remember my, uh, it was uh, Quantum Sam Ovens. It was a virtual one in, uh, I think it was like May or June. Or I think it was June. And, uh, and the next weekend, Rueda was going to travel to Detroit for a wedding. And I was like, man, I wish quantum was like next week. So all week I can be busy because all, you know, the, that weekend I was like busy, you know, masterminding and with you guys and stuff like that. And I was like, I wish it was next week. And I remember that next week I was like, man, you know what I need? I need an event. I need a, like a seminar, something that I can attend. And I'm not even making this up. 
I dreamed that Tony Robbins had an event July 14th to July 17th. I wake up, I go to TonyRobbins.com, and right there it says, Unleash the Power Within, July 14th to July 17th. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is happening right now, but I'm going, you know, because that was the weekend that I needed to get busy. Yeah. And I went in to like just get busy, and you show up to a Tony event, and it's like, where the fuck am I right now? Yeah. People are like jumping and dancing, and it's like that crazy energy. Yeah. And then from there, I find out that Tony has this this intimate uh, group. And for me, you know, like last year, last year I invested nearly six hundred thousand dollars in self development and courses and coaches, and I'm doing all these one on ones with like Dean Graziosi, Ty Lopez, Dan Locke, like learning from all these people. And I was on this like run of like self-development and like learning everything and anything. I felt like I was going to fucking die in six months. So I needed to know everything out there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's how I got to it, man. This is how, how you know, it all really started. And, and that's why I'm here. But now I'm like obsessed with this self-development and this like working on my psychology and working on the, on the, on the, 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 on my spirit, working on me personally on the inside, because I know that regardless what is happening out there, if I can figure this thing out, I'll be okay. Because fulfillment doesn't come from out there, it comes from within. 100%, dude. Love it. What a journey, man. Thanks for sharing. It goes back to the limiting belief stuff also, right? It's like a lot of people, they want to start something new doesn't matter what it is. You're building this blueprint for yourself. Maybe that's more money. Maybe that's health, right? Maybe it's you want to donate money to charity, but you don't have the money. <laughs> Tony talks about 80% psychology, 20% skill. And the interesting thing about that is it applies to every facet of life. But in the context of if we want to talk about online business, we want to talk about building an Amazon business, or you want to talk about building some sort of an empire in the internet space. Again, you're going to find yourself at home by yourself with a team that's virtual or virtual assistance or like an Amazon infrastructure out there somewhere. And the only way that you're going to be able to successfully get past your belief of I can't do it is if you lean into the fact that success determined by the psychology of your mindset coming into that experience, 20% skill, 80% psychology. It's like students come to us to learn how to launch an Amazon business and scale, right? They come to us to learn how to differentiate products and build businesses and shit. Cool. That's a skill. Fucking you can teach that shit easy step by step this is what you do one two three four literally any human could look at that and be like i understand now how to do this but how many actually pull the trigger and and change their life forever in the grand scheme well, of the world and why because of the psychology behind it because of the limiting belief of i've failed before i might fail again i don't have time i can't do it those are all limiting beliefs and that's all psychology so the deeper you go here, the faster you will realize you fucking can. You can. If he can, I can. Everybody else over here can. You fucking can. 80% of it's psychology. So if you smash past that limiting belief, and there's many ways to do this, you can literally Google like how to break a limiting belief, how to understand I can do things. Like just Google it and watch some YouTube videos. You'll see what's up. Our coaches talk about it all the time. The second that you click that you can, then you just apply the skill. The skill can be taught. The skill can be learned. And it's just like riding a bike, right? You didn't know how to ride a bike, but now you do. You were a baby who didn't know how to walk. You didn't just fucking stop and crawl the rest of your life, right? Like I'm looking at you at home. Like, are you fucking crawling around right now like a baby? I don't think so, right? Bashar, are you walking? You crawling? Like I'm walking. Like I definitely fell over the first time I tried to walk, right? So it's like in a business, if your psychology says, I'm going to continue pushing through my limiting beliefs and, and the thoughts that I can't and just keep applying the skill and surrounding myself with people who can help me, eventually you're going to be able to walk and run and do all the shit you want to do to build out this blueprint of the future version of you who you want to be, you know? And that's what you did with the Tony, the Tony uh, adventure you're on. 
right? You went from a place of controlling, micromanaging restaurateur to skiing in Sun Valley with Tony Robbins, financially in a completely different place. And I would argue most of that came from the belief that you could, and that led you to actually going after and getting the skill. It's like, I can fucking do it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm doing this shit. I got me. Let's do it. And then you went and doubled down on skills for how many years to figure it out. Now, let me ask you this, man. How much faster do you think it would have gotten you from where you were to say where you are now if rather than just focusing on skill for that long, what if you would have moved into the space where psychology was the thing you were focusing on in parallel with the skill? So it's like you're learning marketing, you're learning Amazon, you're learning teams and leadership. What if at the same time you would have also invested into the personal development and the coaching back then equally in the early days? Do you think that your curve would have been faster? The very first thing uh, when I talked to Ty Lopez, he said, if I had to redo my career all over again, I would triple down on mentors. And I remember like my Amazon business did not work until I invested in a mentor. Uh, looking back at my restaurant, really looking, if I had to redo this all over again, what I would have done would have probably been to partner up with someone who knew what he, you know, what they were doing. But even more importantly than that, like, I don't know if you remember when we first like started scaling BJK University and we, when we launched the program and stuff like that, we used to have like a 20, 30% refund rate. Mm. People would get in and then they would get overwhelmed in refund because literally video one, you know, module one, video one, it was how to find a product, yeah. you know, and it was like skill. We were focused <laughs> on skill. And it wasn't until I realized that, dude, like a lot of these people just haven't launched a business before. This is probably too overwhelming. I'm probably making it too complicated because for me, I knew I needed someone to show me like how to do it. You know, I wasn't too focused on the psychology. And this is why now we invest in, in Mary Jo, who comes in three times per year to do, you know, uh, 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 eight week classes that are all tailored on mindset. You know, how to how to get your money right, how to uh, uh, how to remove limiting beliefs, how to, uh, uh, um, you know, make sure that like you understand that this is a business. Ups and downs will happen. Creating your core values, changing that blueprint because now you're doing something different. So this was our first episode. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. It was probably cut up a little bit as we went because my camera kept on turning off. I don't know what the hell is going on. Got to figure it out. But hey, we're just starting. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I mean, this is, you know, we're just starting out. We barely scratched the surface. There's going to be a bunch of stuff that we're going to be talking about. We're, we'll be posting some more videos and stuff like that. But if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And also be sure to drop the name, whatever name you guys feel like that this podcast should have below in the chat. And at the end of March, uh, the winner will receive $1,000 in cash. And number three, drop whatever content that you guys want us to talk about in future videos. Outside of that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.